Hello, everybody. It is me, Pacific. You know what? I get real tired of hypocrisy. You'll, you'll catch what I'm talking about in a minute. Where Where's the outcry? Where is the outcry? Let, let me read you this. This, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is perfect timing that this happened. Ferguson, Missouri, Baltimore, the black community grandstanding about all the bad cops out there. White cop kills a thug. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it again. A thug, Michael Brown, robbing a convenience store, roughing up the clerk, then walking down the middle of the street, feeling like he's all that on a stick. And we know the rest of the story. But... The black community made a big deal about how terrible the white cop was for shooting Michael Brown. The black community didn't say anything collectively as a whole about Michael Brown's ridiculous, illegal, unlawful, unethical, ungodly. For those of you that are black Christians and support Michael Brown, you better get your head examined. This Bible is very clear. Thou shall not steal. It also says to submit to the governing authorities. Michael Brown didn't follow either of those rules. But I'm tired of talking about this. See, I grew up in the era of the Rodney King, the O.J. Simpson trial. On and on it goes. But let's read this article. Let, let's talk about how, how ridiculous hypocrisy gets. Mississippi police officer shot and killed. May 9th, this is by Reuters, two police officers were shot and killed on Saturday in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and the shooter fled the area in a police vehicle, local TV station WDAM reported, excuse me, the police vehicle was abandoned near a local train depot, it said. The station, citing local officials, said law enforcement agencies were conducting a manhunt for the suspect in the area, which is about 80 miles southeast of Jackson. A police dispatcher declined to comment, and a spokesperson for the Hattiesburg Police Department could not immediately be reached for confirmation or detail on the report. According to WDAM, two officers were transported to Forest General Hospital in Hattiesburg, where they were pronounced dead. WDAM journalist Ryan Moore, who reported from the scene of the shooting, said in messages on Twitter that the officers were shot during a traffic stop and that the suspect then fled in one of their vehicles. Reporting by Alex Dobuzinskis in Los Angeles, editing by Chris Mygod. So... Can we talk about the two cops? Because when I tell you what the ethnicity of the two cops were, this is very interesting. Benjamin Dean was a white Mississippi police officer. LeCurry Tate was a black Mississippi police officer. Where is the outcry from the African-American community that burned down stores and retirement centers and went crazy in the streets in Ferguson and Baltimore? Where's the outcry about the white cop that was doing a routine traffic stop that was shot and killed by, you guessed it, two black suspects now in custody? Where is the outcry about the black officer that was shot and killed by two black suspects that are in custody? Of course not. This is the hypocrisy in America that bothers me to no end. For those that think that I'm racist, you're an ignoramus. I am tired of being buttonholed by a certain percentage of the black community that likes to tell us, tell us white people that we have no right to speak on this matter, and when we do, we're racist. I'm stating facts. Two police officers doing their job, a white and a black guy, both shot and killed. And the mother responds with some sort of a lame comment, well, he was on drugs. But then later she says, he hated cops. Oh, there you go. Let's admit that in the courtroom. 
I have met black people personally right here in Denver that when they get pulled over for traffic ticket, this is the first thing they said, oh, it was a white guy. He was racist. No, it had nothing to do with you going 60 in a 25 zone in a residential neighborhood. Nothing at all. I see this at work with a lot of the black people I work with. Anything happens to them, it's always racism. This is the same old broken record story that I hear all the time. And I sit there and listen to this and I go, no, it has nothing to do with your actions, does it? Black on black violence is an enormous problem in the black community. I read that online this morning. That statistically black on black violence is higher than white on white violence. Why is that? That will be blamed on the white person, I'm sure. But that's just as interesting. Pacific is tired of growing up and watching news being dominated by drama kings and queens from this ethnic community that everything is against them. Let me tell you what a co-worker told me today who is Mexican blood. Let me tell you what he told me the other day in the employee parking lot. We were talking about some of our frustrations with life and some of uh, the things that we experience at work. And he said something that shocked me. Now, mind you, he's Hispanic. He said, you know what I notice? I notice less racism from the white people. And I notice more racism directed from the Hispanic and black community towards the white people. I said, thank you. That's what I'm talking about. It's true. Pacific has had his own encounters just working. Now, this is no reflection on my job. I like my job. But I have had more problems directed at me by people that are non-white than I have by my own kind. Racist stuff. Hate I need to add an insert. One of my friends was telling me about a gal that I work with who is not nice. Very stuck up. She's not pretty. She thinks she is. And she told my friend that all men are a-holes. I'm like, really? She said that? She goes, oh yeah. She thinks she's all that on a stick and you know, all that in a bag of Fritos. I said, that's funny. I've always smiled and been nice. She never says hi to me. There are women out there that believe all men are a-holes, even though they act like complete walking jerks, that they don't separate out the bad men that they chose to date and get involved with and realize that not all of us are like that. One of the biggest complaints I have about female dumb in any ethnicity is all the complaining I hear them do about how terrible men are. And then I want to do an interview with them, complete with camera and nine Colorado News helicopters hovering over and said, but wait a minute, let's talk about the guys you dated or married. Let's talk about the guy that was interested in you, that was nice, and you said, uh, he's a geek. <laughs> we don't talk about that, do we? It's the same thing with this race riot, race wars. We don't want to talk about the black community is very quiet right now. Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Oprah Winfrey, they're awfully quiet about this one. You see, in America, it's okay to shoot cops. I'm sorry, it is. It, it, it really is. With, with the way the media handles this stuff, it's okay to shoot the police, especially if it's a black guy shooting the cops. Then we don't want to have any news coverage on this. We have a little story and a little bit of news coverage, but it's basically buried at the bottom of somebody's $3,000 poodle makeover or Britney Spears and her new breast implants, whatever. The thing that bothers me about this is it's just wrong. You read the bio on these officers' life. One had kids. Is the black community raising money to support that? The children left behind fatherless? Do they care? Have they taken to the streets and decried this injustice? Of course not. No. Pacific has lived long enough that when the community out there gets all up in arms about something, if you just dig a little deeper, it's not what it seems. I have a problem the older I get 
that it's very, very difficult for me to look at America and find that I'm proud of a country that is becoming more and more drama news, news generated by biased news reporters, news stations, that news would rather spend time with helicopters and cameras photographing people riot and tear things apart. And the news, which could be used as a tool for good, is not standing up and saying, this is disgusting. If Pacific had a news channel, I'll be saying, can we get some people to raise money for the fatherless children and the wives left behind? One guy, one of these gentlemen dreamed of being a police officer. Let's go a step further. You, you don't see the African community taking to the streets when a pretty bead-braided African-American little girl goes missing in their community. Silence is deafening. She shows up on a milk carton and that's it. I'm tired of this stuff. Tired. And do you know who abducted her and killed her and left her for dead? one within their own community and nothing is said i've watched the statistics i've watched what goes on <clears throat> and i've watched all the clamoring and yelling and buildings burning i watched back in the 90s when rodney king ignited a firestorm and la was much much area of south central was destroyed that fire trucks were fired at, responding to buildings set completely ablaze. And all I could think of is, what does this have to do with the injustice of Rodney King at the hands of the LAPD? Absolutely nothing. Did you notice something? <clears throat> Did you notice that the white community did not take to the streets in the African-American community and set their houses on fire and riot. Did you, did you notice that? Should I take a moment of silence to let that settle in and whack you hard? You see, whites have suffered injustices all the time, and we don't like it either, but we don't tear things apart as a rule. <clears throat> Why is that? Well, because some of us believe that God will deal with that in the end. Some of us are also taught that we don't agree with everything, but we know karma works. That in time, <clears throat> it's like that uh, guy in Florida that had a history of a problem with guns and somebody finally shot him the other day. Can't remember his name. <clears throat> O.J. Simpson got away with the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. And I was livid when I watched the jury deliberate and come back with that lousy verdict. And I thought, are you kidding me? If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Uh, O.J., I hate to remind you, when a leather glove gets drenched with blood, it shrinks. I know this because I've had leather rawhide gloves that when I'm working out in the snow or the rain with them and they dry and I go to put them on a week later, it doesn't fit. Lame argument that works on ignorant people. Blood all over his own Bronco. Cato Kalen hearing all the thumps and bumps behind his little guest apartment on the O.J. Simpson estate. The L.A. Police Department, having been invited over at O.J. Simpson's house to have pool parties. Racism. And they keyed in on Mark Furman. One guy. <clears throat> and used that as their out. But O.J.'s sitting in prison now. Because his criminal behavior never left him and he finally got caught. But justice was never served for Nicole Brown, Simpson, or Ronald Goldman. Ronald Goldman, having nothing to do with any of this, slaughtered. Yeah, I saw the pictures. They were gory. The blood all over the walkway. Those two walked up, didn't even expect it. 
as what we thought was a teddy bear of a great old professional football player, and Mr. Juice goes into a rage and becomes primitive as can be and tears them to pieces. The horror and the fear of that. And did you see the white community take to the streets in L.A. and tear things apart because a white hot-looking woman was tore up because a Jewish, handsome, successful man was tore up? No. Did the Jewish community come to the streets? I'm tired of this. Is anybody else with me on that? Pacific is one who has experienced ethnicity in living color. I've lived in a black neighborhood. I've lived in a Hispanic neighborhood. And I've lived in it all Chinese neighborhood in Hong Kong. I love color, diversity, ethnicity. I love differences. And when I say differences, I'm not talking when it's differences against truth. What really bothers me about ethnicity these days in America, as I've said many times, that there's certain ethnicities that they's got their own rules, and that bothers me. That we're all obligated to follow the same laws and God's commands. And if we're honest, most of us don't follow the laws in every iota. We don't dot our I's and cross our T's every single time with perfection. Thank God for the grace of God. We certainly don't follow the commands of God in perfect fashion. But what bothers me is when some people feel that they don't have to follow the rules because of their skin color, because of their ethnic background, or the comment I've heard from Hispanic and black communities is that the white man made all those rules. <laughs> rules, thou shall not steal. You shouldn't speed. You shouldn't carjack. Yeah, they're to protect you too, pal. I'm just speaking truth here. Where's Al Sharpton in times like these? Where's Jesse Jackson's outrage in times like these? You could have heard a pen drop. And let me remind my viewers that live in hardworking African American communities that Al Sharpton and Reverend Jesse Jackson, and he is not a reverend to me, they don't live in your neighborhood. Neither does Oprah. They live in the hodgepodge, gated, secure communities away from all of reality. You know, the 1% elite. Just something to think about. If Jesse Jackson's out for the small guy, then why isn't he living in the small man's neighborhood? But he's living like a king and making big money. Reverend Jesse Jackson does not represent this at all. Reverend Jesse Jackson represents himself and his twisted view of God. He's not a reverend. He was not called by God. No way. We're not even going to talk about Al Sharpton and all the others. Hmm. This stuff just blows me away, viewers. Totally blows me away. <clears throat> the news went on and on about the Baltimore riots. And I'm starting to wonder why the lawmakers and legislatures don't come against the press and said, will you stop giving endless coverage and footage? You know, the, the, the news people, they don't stop... <clears throat> And grab these guys breaking stuff up. They stand there and go. <laughs> they should be charged with being an accomplice. Our fascination with moment by moment updates and stories and drama. Is evident by the fact that the news feeds us with this stuff. <clears throat> to deliberately stir the passions of people. But unfortunately the media is too stupid to realize all they're doing is empowering the thugs that sit in their ratty-tatty couches going, oh, yeah, look at that, ah, and, yeah, egg it on. It seems that there should be laws saying, media, if you're going to draw undue attention to these thugs and give them their moment of stardom, we're going to shut you down. Oh, but freedom of speech. But where's the media? 
Where's the outrage? How come the white people didn't take to the streets and a white officer was shot by two black men and then their cruiser was stolen? Why? <clears throat> well, I could offer a variety of reasons because a lot of white people don't care. They're so myopic and caught up in their own self-centered little world. that. But, but I, I would venture to say that also a lot of us don't believe in tearing everything up. That those of us that have a Judeo-Christian ethic believe that God will deal with this in the end. But to me, it's all disgusting. The hypocrisy of all of this is unbelievable. And I am capitalizing on the story to make a point, and it is made. Where's the outcry from the black community that one of their own was shot by one of their own? Where's the outcry from the black community about the injustice of a white police officer also doing his job, shot and killed? Where? You know, I can only handle so much of this stuff, and I have to say something. I wouldn't want to be a cop these days. Do you notice the switch in our country? People call cops pigs. In the 60s, they called them pigs. There's always been this underlying rebellion. And, you know, God has something to say. <clears throat> if you do what is right, then you don't need to fear him who's in authority. Do you know that? Oh, yes, we do. Really? Can we talk about the people that everybody's upholding as the poor victims? Michael Brown, if he was doing what was right, none of those days' events would have come down. Why is it in America that people do stuff? And I see this in traffic all day long. They do something. They precipitate, provoke <clears throat> a problem, a situation. They break the law. They do wrong. They show disrespect. And when another American reacts to that, they want to cry foul ball. Do you notice that trend in our culture today? For example, I'm driving my school bus. Somebody cuts two inches in front of me in a $65,000 SUV, and I hit the horn, and out comes this. And they stop. You want a good, you, you got a problem. Yeah, I got a problem. You're driving like an idiot. I got a busload of kids. Does that even register in your head that you're being unsafe? No. I think America has actually come to the point where they have lost their minds. And, and part of this is because when you have a nation denying God and saying we evolved from monkeys, it's only a matter of time before we start acting like it. And the sad thing is, is monkeys don't even act like this. So we're worse than them. Yes, do I tie this in with evolution? You betcha. But does that mean Christians always act perfect? Of course not. I heard a story at church the other day that just shocked me. <clears throat> I'm thankful for her honesty, but it still shocked me. A woman in a position at our church, in a position, admitted that she was at one of the Colorado local stores. <clears throat> she was down to five bucks, had taken her daughter to the store, and they were going to buy a handful of things. This was some years ago. And she found a $20 bill in the aisle. Actually, her daughter found it. And her mother goes, thank you. Not a couple minutes later, girl in hot pink shorts walked right down the aisle. She said, excuse me, I lost some money. Did you happen to see it? And mom said, nope. <clears throat> the girl walked out of the store. And mother did think about it for a few minutes and then felt very convicted by the Holy Spirit. Thank God for that. And went around the store and didn't find her. Went around the parking lot didn't find her. She decided to give it to the church. And she told her I didn't do what was right. And I admit, I'm like, wow, you, you, I know you're down to your last five bucks, but you just stole that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But at least she was convicted. I meet a lot of Christians that aren't even convicted anymore. I mean, Christians that aren't convicted about going the speed limit and obeying traffic laws. I mean, Christians that tell me, oh, I earn all this money under the table. <clears throat> we got people working for us that sell goods and food, and they don't report that on their taxes, and they're making good money under the table. For the Christian, it's not acceptable. Give to Caesars what is Caesars. Give to God what is God. Robbing is robbing. 
<clears throat> so I'm not saying that because one's a Christian, they're going to be better. But what bothers me today is there's a prevailing mentality in America that is getting worse and worse. And whenever anything goes on the news involving cops, the first reaction of the public, ah, the cops must have screwed up. It was interesting that Michael Brown's family called the cops just two weeks later when one of their own relatives was getting into it with them in a parking lot. Oh, but you want the cops to protect you now. Okay. I would have been inclined, you know, since your son has such a problem with us and you guys have such a problem with us, we're not going to respond. Do you notice how American, we, we, we look at the bad cops and there are those out there. And the police departments in the U.S. need to clean up their act. Uh, I'll say it. I get so tired of it in Lakewood, Denver, and I see cops speeding, jerking around me, turning right and going into the left lane. No turn signals. And I'm like, what are they doing? They're not even following the regular traffic laws that they impose upon us. I do have a problem with that. And there are officers that abuse their power. I remember in Duluth watching cops all run the lights. They put on their lights to go through intersections, and they all went to the donut shop. I was in my bus. I saw that, and I wanted to pull over and said, wow, so you guys have the right to turn on your lights and siren to go through the intersections also you can go to the donut shop. And I watched them because I was at a light right there, and they just get out of their car, and they walk in and talk, and so it wasn't a crime scene. Or I just thought maybe I ought to put that in the Duluth News Tribune. <clears throat> Bengals had it right. If you can't find the cop, they're all at the donut shop. Well, well. You know what? I respect authority, but I don't respect authority when they abuse their position. But it never gives me the right to go to the streets and tear things up. Two wrongs don't make a right. And there's something lost in our American society when we were the number one academically, number one in the sciences and math and, and nuclear and military technology. And I watch this almost Neanderthal mentality surfacing more and more and more that drama is the order of the day. We like news where people are trashing stuff and people are angry because it's reflective of the anger that's in us individually. I look at the way people drive today. They're not at peace with God. They're not appreciative of the blessings they've gotten. Some of the biggest offenders out there. I, I, I watched yesterday. <clears throat> guy in an older Chevy pickup let, let me in. The people in the brand new expensive SUVs. They crowd and push up in there and aren't going to let you in. And it's like, how come the people that got the nice goods are the least likely to be polite? How come the people with the most money are least likely to be generous? How come the people that work hard and have a hard life tend to be more caring and more generous and more accommodating to those that don't have? But I have a problem with Americans that always want to bash on the authority and bash on the cops. And, and don't get me started on this because this is a separate issue. But you notice when Clinton was in office and getting his ding-dong sucked at the Oval Office by Monica Lewinsky, where was the outrage from the liberal Democrat Party? There wasn't any. But when the Republicans do anything perceived, meaning real or imagined, the Democrats are yelling, impeachment, screaming, raising Cain. Obama has actually committed crimes. He has lied to the American people. He didn't do things by the Constitution. The Supreme Court and other entities declared that he was abusing his power. If you don't believe me, go back and dig in the archives. Where was the outcry from the Democrats? There wasn't any. Because it's okay for them to do wrong. Don't you dare do wrong by our definition. And this is a prevailing mentality in America that whatever side of the fence you're on, don't, don't offend my side. But the thing that's bothering me as a white male <clears throat> 
is I'm watching. And I'm watching things come full circle now. That it was the white people who actually voted in affirmative action. It is the white people that actually opened the borders for people from all over the world to move to America. It's actually white people that look the other way on the illegal immigration thing with Mexico. <clears throat> but we're branded as racist every time these dramas come up. And I'm actually watching something happen after 49 years that I'm finding a lot of Hispanics and blacks are racist towards me and they will not hire me. And they will not promote me, even though I'm a good worker and I work my butt off and I do things very well done. And it's hitting me more and more that if Hispanics took over all of Denver, would I be able to get a job by them? And can I say something? Probably not. Just like the woman that's not very pretty and has got acne all over her face saying that all men are a-holes, and yet you're rude to everybody, even those that aren't a-holes and are nice to you. How am I supposed to take you seriously? And I'll bet you she'd never hire a white man. You see, Pacific's live long enough. I just talk about things, and people will get inflamed by this video. They get very upset. But I haven't said anything that's racist. I haven't said anything that isn't true. I haven't said anything promoting hate or violence. But you know what? I'm, I'm getting tired of the backlash that's always coming towards us. <clears throat> the comments being made more and more by me and by others that are white, that we're becoming the minority. And we're watching that play out. Will affirmative action apply to me and the white women and the white men that I know? <clears throat> Denver's 58% Hispanic. They're literally taking over. Do I have a problem with that? I only have a problem with any group taking over when they exclude other ethnicities. And we're seeing that. That it isn't just white people who show racism. That when any other group of people get in power, they show racism. That is a fact. That Pacific is a believer in a very diverse community where the balance isn't tipped by one group or another. We really don't have equality in the U.S. We really don't. We see discrepancy and favoritism even in some of the biggest workplaces in America that are so-called politically correct and actually apply affirmative action. They have their ways of discriminating. It works all the time. They don't like a coworker, somebody who's a whistleblower. They'll find a way to get rid of you and you'll have no legal recourse. So there is no real protection against us if somebody doesn't like you based on your color, religious beliefs, ethnicity, or a host of other issues. If management does not like you in any place in America, even if you do your job to perfection, they'll start creating a file on you and they will get you out the door. That's a fact. And unless they make some obvious mistakes... You have no recourse unless you go to the ACLU and get them to fight your cause. But the two Mississippi police officers, we need to pray for their families. Those families have been dealt an injustice, had their husband, their fathers taken away from them without any reasonable reason. They were in the line of the duty. Line of duty and what bothers me is their heroes. They died upholding the laws. They died upholding the truth. They died upholding <clears throat> a semblance of civility and respect for America. And we have a lot of people living in this country of all colors, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, European, and they don't value our Constitution. And they don't have respect for anybody. They're totally self-centered. They live a thug mentality, steal what isn't theirs, won't work hard, smoke pot, do drugs, and are just dregs on society complaining about how awful the white man is or any group of people are. It's too bad that America couldn't ship them off to an island and say, you don't like it here? Go. 
And for all those that think America's so racist and so bad, I have just one thing to say. It doesn't take you that long to earn enough for a plane ticket and fly out of here. And personally, the older I get, I'm starting to believe that there's certain people that just need to go away. Go leave. Get on a boat. Get on a ferry. Get on a plane. Grab a rowboat or a dinghy or a life raft. And you got freedom to leave. There is nothing in the U.S. that says you can't get in a little boat and just sail right into international waters and never come back. That's the beauty of America. They're not going to hold you here. I'm getting tired of people saying we need to make a better America. They're promoting some of the biggest hate and racism the other direction. You're not making a better place. If you don't think I don't see it on the school buses. If you don't think that I, as a 49-year-old man, don't see what the parents are teaching their own children by the way the children act towards me and some of the comments that have come out of children's mouths show me right away, boy, the parents are racist. Parents teach some of their children the white man's the bad guy. One of these days, we're going to talk about some of the dynamics of ethnicities and a lot of the accusations made about the white community that just simply aren't true. I will come back and say something that, that needs to be said. In America, our founding fathers were European, which means they were white. They set up one of the best government documents that any country could have in its constitution. It don't mean to be rude, but if I start looking around at other ethnicities and I go to their countries, they don't have that. Mexico doesn't. Ethiopia doesn't. Somalia doesn't. Hong Kong doesn't. China doesn't. Sometimes I get tired of some of the things people say about white people and the Constitution, our founding fathers, and I go, you know what? You are enjoying a whole lot of stuff because of them. When 99.9% .9 of the current infrastructure that we have in this country was built by white people, the roads, the sewer systems, everything, way back in the turn of the century, and we take those things for granted, and I hear all this stuff about how bad the white man is, I'm tired of it. There are racist white people. I've met them, and I don't like them either. But I believe in giving credit where credit is due all the way around. But a lot of racism is not coming from the white people today. It's coming from the others. Some people need to check themselves. Two cops were shot by two black men. One officer black, one officer white. Where's the outcry from the black community? Where's Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson when you need them? Where? Where's the outcry from the black community about little black girls that are cute as a bug on a rug with little beads in their hair that are gone missing? Where? But if that black girl was abducted by a white man, raped and thrown in an alley somewhere, watch out. But it's okay for their own to do that. And nobody says anything. I, I'm just saying that that's what I'm watching happen. I'm getting kind of tired of it. A little girl abducted in any community is an outrage. For crying out loud, why can't adults leave children alone of any ethnicity? I don't care what you got going in that messed up head of yours, but leave the children alone. My gosh, that used to be a rule. That whatever guys had going on in their heads, leave the kids out of it. Used to be. Now the kids aren't even safe anymore. Let me say something to my viewers. There are black people that are tired of this discrepancy as well. Let me make it very clear that there's hardworking, honest, God-fearing black men and women out there that don't like this kind of stuff either. There are Hispanic men and women that I've met that don't like this injustice. They're tired of the illegal immigration. They're tired of the racism from within their own community directed at us whites. I've talked to them. 
So this isn't all. This is not a carte blanche that all Hispanics are racist and blacks are all racist. No. Just like all whites aren't racist. But it's getting lopsided now. We're being accused of a whole lot. And a lot of the racism by other Hispanic males telling me to my face, I find less racism from the white community. I find the racism and the stirring of this pot is done more by my own community and the black community than any other in America. That's coming from a Hispanic male that I happen to respect. He's a hard worker. And there's other Hispanic men that I've talked to. A white woman that used to rent next door told me that her and her co-workers were talking one day and said, you know who's the most discriminated against in American society? The white male. Now, people would dispute that. I tend to agree with that. I know that Hispanics and black men are discriminated against, too. But if you watch the media today, the media is playing games. The media does advertising. They got an Asian. They got a black woman. They got a white woman. But you notice something? No white male. That's disappearing from the ads. But you go down Federal Boulevard and you have billboards all in Spanish. But you don't have a white male picture in there. You don't have a black male picture and you don't have an Asian picture. It's all Mexican. So we need to be careful that if we're going to talk about equality, then let's demand that the Hispanic community stop putting everything in Spanish and requiring us to know Spanish when this is America and English is the prevalent language. And if you're going to have billboard ads promoting all your Mexican stuff, can you put a white and an Asian and a black person in there too? They won't do that. And conversely, let's ask the same thing from the black community. No. Multiculturalism really doesn't work because, unfortunately, it's one-sided. And as I've gotten older and watched, it's, it's a tough issue. But here in Denver... We have people from Nepal, Somalia, Ethiopia, Nicaragua, China. We've got people from all over the world. Denver is becoming a melting pot of people from all over. Our schools are reflecting that. And you pick up some of these routes where it's very multi-ethnic. There's a lot of problems with those kids on the buses. Because people aren't being taught to accept differences. People aren't being taught that we all need to follow the same rules and laws and commands of God and also respect. That we can agree to disagree, but we're not being taught that today. My culture is superior to yours. I heard a Hispanic male that worked in our terminal one day look at me when we were talking about dynamics one day and he says, now you know what it feels like to be Mexican. I said, I lived in China. I know what it feels like to be white and be a minority and to be looked at as a laughing stock because I wasn't accepted by the Chinese as a rule. I don't need to know what it's like to be Mexican. My sister's Mexican. And my sister will tell you that she doesn't like a lot of Mexicans because of the way they behave over here. Yes, my sister was adopted from a different family. I didn't grow up in a white cocoon. Though there were people within my own family that could be a little bit racist, I didn't grow up being that way myself. I grew up in Los Angeles and I walked home from school with blacks, Asians, Hispanics, and white people. And it's funny, when we were kids, we all seemed to get along. And it wasn't until we became adults that all of a sudden there's all this walls and barriers and moats with alligators around everybody. It's like, what happened? I remember somebody aptly said it, that, man, in the 70s, we all danced to disco together, and now? You know what's really sad? 
and this is this is worth noting, then the gay and lesbian community in Pacific, you know where I stand on that, 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 that homosexuality, according to the Bible, is wrong. God says it's wrong. Lesbianism is wrong. And we're seeing this rise all across the board. I've admitted my struggles in the past with dabbling into stuff to find out who I was, and I have determined, nope, I'm into women. But it's funny. The, the gay and lesbian community will be more accepting of other races than even a lot of Christians are. Now that's messed up. For the Christian, and, and the Christian has this problem. Let's take the Southern Baptist Church. Southern Baptist Church, which is part of the Southern Baptist Convention, they supported slavery way back in the day. The Christians committed their own atrocious acts, which, you know, are very, very hypocritical. But if, if we really believe that God created Adam and Eve, and if we believe that Noah, with his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, who were the father of the nations, Asia, Africa, and Europe, yes, then nobody's superior. That God created all peoples. And for white people to think that we're, the, as Hitler, the Aryan, the blonde hair, blue eyed, the perfect race, or blacks wearing their sheets, shirts saying black is the dominant gene, or the Hispanic community with their chica pride. It doesn't hold up in light of this. If we all believe in God, then we have to believe we came from Adam and Eve. And if we all descended from Adam and Eve, that means we're all related. Doesn't mean we're brothers and sisters like some people want to loosely say that, that we're all just going on this wonderful cruise ship to heaven. No, there's there's conditions. We have to trust Christ as our Lord and Savior. But racism is not biblical. Thinking you're superior to another race is not endorsed by God. I can judge the actions of another, whether you're black, Hispanic, Latina, Filipina, Chinese, Laos, it doesn't matter. I can judge wrong actions. My Bible gives me that right. People run around and say, do not judge. But watch them. They will judge soon enough. Oh, did you see her hair? And they'll judge stupid stuff they shouldn't even be talking about. We all judge. But there's right judgment and wrong judgment. If you judge a man by the color of his skin, you're an idiot. Martin Luther King, I agree. But when you watch the last presidential elections, and I, well, I voted in Obama because he was black. That, to me, is the height of ignorance and anti-intellectualism, that we should vote on the content of the man's character, as Martin Luther King himself said. Pacific believes, if a black man beats me out for a job, more power to him. I'm not against that. Never once will you hear say Pacific, oh, black guy got it over me. I'll say he was more qualified. Good for him. I don't have a problem with that. Because I believe in justice. God will provide my needs. And when we as Christians realize that God provides our needs, so we don't need to clamor and compete against another. We trust our father. And if a black man gets a higher position than you, and he rightly uses it, and he rightly earned it by God, Go up and give him a high five and say, congratulations, man. Bless him. But what I see in America is more division than I've ever seen in my 49 years. We are not the United States anymore. I don't see it in the workplace. I don't see it in the church house. I don't see it in the schoolhouse. I don't see it on the streets of America. I see more people are consumed with following their own selfish lust, desires, and getting ahead and climbing on everybody to get there. And it, and it disturbs me. That when we get away from God and we deny God and deny his place in our lives and deny who he is and then tell us we all fall from some soup slime somewhere, what do you expect? But what really bothers me is when people talk about trying to win souls for Jesus and being evangelistic and you go to white congregation after white congregation or all black congregation or all Hispanic congregation and you don't see anybody else from another ethnicity in those congregations, that disturbs me. That the gospel is for all people. All people. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
this cop shooting, all the stuff that's going on, I'm going to tell you exactly where it originates. It all originates from the seat of hell. Satan loves division. He loves disharmony. He loves drama, and he loves chaos. And we see that just filling the streets of America more and more and more. Don't tell me you're all about justice when you're silent about two cops being killed by two black people. Don't tell me that. Prove it. Two cops doing their job had no reason to be shot by two thugs. And if the black community has a problem with me calling people like that thugs, deal with it. Because you know what? There's white thugs too. So I will call a white man a thug if he's a thug. This isn't a racist statement. This is you behave a certain way, you get that name, thug. If I went out and robbed convenience stores and knocked up old ladies and, and took their purses, I'm a thug. Anyways, I think I've said enough on this issue. It's hump day, everybody. Have a great day bringing you another fine video, high quality, complete with junk on shelves in a storage room somewhere in Denver metro area. Or is it the surrounding burbs? We're keeping it real. We're being controversial. And we're talking like we need to talk. We are not politically correct here. Pacific Ocean Asia does not walk to the beat of everybody else's drum. We talk truth. We open up people's minds to take a look at this and step outside their little box of a world and start going, you know what? We need to be more aware of the hypocrisies going on all around us. My regards to the families of the slain police officers. This is unfortunate. This is sad. But in the middle of this, remember that God is still on his throne, that people make bad choices, that God gives us the power of choice. We don't always know why God allows bad things to happen like this. But all things work together for good to those that love God. That's what the Bible says. So in the midst of your grief, look up to God. That is the best I can give you. That these things don't make sense. But there is a devil. And his goal is to seek, to destroy, to devour, to kill. He's the father of lies. And you see that bear out in all these racist drama, American, you know, riots. That the devil is behind all of this stuff. God is not in this. God is not promoting this. Not at all. This is Pacific signing off. Bye-bye.